with no special announcements this week so just a quick reminder we are gathering every Sunday at 10:30 for Holy Communion at the church for a live service all you have to do is just quickly let me know that you're coming and every Wednesday now at 7 o'clock we are having Bible studies via the zoom platform um, we're working through the letter to the Romans at the moment if you want to be in touch with our chaplain his information is on the screen if you'd like to do a donation to the work that we do um, at, in Liège, the bank account information is also on the screen. If you want to take the time to go through the readings before we, you listen to the sermon, the readings for Trinity Sunday are Psalm 29, Romans 8 verses 12 to 17, and John chapter 3 verses 1 to 17. Let us pray the collect prayer. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. So we read John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are the teacher who has come from God. No one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven, except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpents in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray together as we reflect upon the words of Jesus, the words of the Bible. Spirit of God, we ask that you come and lead us, that you reveal yourself to us. You increase our understanding and our knowledge. 
you fill us with the knowledge of heaven. That we may continue to sing holy, holy, holy to God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As you can see on the screen, the title of today is Life in the Spirit. Life in the Spirit. I, I, I thought about this theme two days ago as I was reflecting on the readings. And my practice is that before preparing my sermon, I like taking my time, you know, taking the readings into prayer so that the Lord may reveal to me the title. And then Monday, I didn't get anything. Tuesday, Wednesday, nothing. I said, gosh, what am I going to say on Sunday? But I kept on praying. Thursday, nothing. Until Friday, then this tied to life in the spirit came to mind. I know sometimes it can be very scary talking about the spirit. Because we are talking about an immaterial reality. Something which we do not see. Something which we do not have control over. The spirit. But the Bible makes us understand that God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. John chapter 4 verse 24. God is spirit. And those who want to worship him must also worship him in spirit and in truth. So life in the spirit is another way to say life in the way of God. And this life implies God's inspiration, God's revelations. It implies God's love, living according to God's love, according to God's peace, and so on. It also implies discernment. Because when you are living according to the Spirit of God, you have the discernment, which is a great gift that most of us don't realize it. The gift of discernment. That which helps you to know what is of God and what is not of God. That which helps you to know what is evil and what is good. That is discernment. A life in the Spirit helps us to live a life full of discernment. So I would like you to take your time at home. I know this passage... We read from Romans chapter 8. It's a bit difficult. But if you want to complicate it yourself. But if you want God to, to lead you. Just when you get home. Take time to reflect. To ponder upon the words you read. From that uh, reading. Romans chapter 8. Life in the spirit. What life in the spirit can mean. And allow God to teach you with the same words you are reading in the scripture. So Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says, we are not in the flesh. We are in the spirit because the spirit of God dwells in us. That's a starting point. We are not in the flesh. Be careful here. You know, in, in Christianity, we use what we call symbolic languages, you know, metaphorical languages, metaphysical languages, which you need to unravel with your Christian understanding. So we are not in the flesh, but we are in the spirit because the spirit of God dwells in us, being in the flesh can mean doing the things that are contrary to God's spirit. Or being in the flesh, the way I understand it, means being in the absence of God. God is not with you. You are in the flesh. And when God is absent in your life, you are spiritually vulnerable. And you take evil for good. What is evil? Can become good for you. Just look around you. Look at the world. Things that are happening in the world. 
wars everywhere because of human greed. You can see that God is not there. Where there is God, there is peace. Where there is God, there is understanding. So living in the flesh means living in the absence of God. God is not with you. But I believe as we accepted Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, we have been filled with the Spirit of God. That is why Paul says the Spirit of God dwells in us. The Spirit of God lives in us. And with that same Spirit, we can cry, Abba, Father. And with that same Spirit, we can be fearless in the midst of temptation. Because the Spirit of God in you is not the Spirit of fear. The Spirit of God in you is a Spirit of love, a Spirit of peace, a Spirit of revelation. The Spirit of God that is there to subdue your own spirit. So that whatever you do may be led through the Spirit of God. And Christian life is meaningless if we do not live according to the Spirit of God. That is why Romans chapter 8 says, Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Here we get a sense of what life in the Spirit can mean. Walking in the Spirit. It means allowing God to lead you. Better still, living according to God's ways. Not according to your own ways or to your own understanding. As we will see in the case of Nicodemus. Most of the times we tend to to lead our lives according to our own ways. Forgetting that the Spirit of God lives in us. And be careful, as I said, if you live your life according to your own ways, you become vulnerable. It's like you are kicking away, out of your life, God's Spirit. And when God's Spirit goes away from your life, you become very vulnerable. Really vulnerable. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. The Spirit of God's presence working in us. Life in the Spirit is about knowing God. Knowing who He is to you, not to me. Because the way God reveals Himself to each and every one of us is different. The way God has revealed Himself to me may be different from the way he has revealed himself to Joe or to Ritz or to any other person. To me, when God revealed himself to me, he told me, Guy, I am calling you to sanctification, consecration, and friendship with me. But I don't know to you when God revealed himself to you, what kind of words did God tell you? So we have a different experience when it comes to knowing God. But God remains the same God, the God of love, the God of compassion, and his spirit dwells in us. Remember John chapter 1 verse 12 says, To all those who received Jesus, to all those who believed in him, God gave the power to become children of God. God gave the power to become sons and daughters of God. Children not born of the flesh, but born of the Spirit. Children not born of the flesh, but born of the Spirit. So we are Christians, meaning we are children of the Spirit. We are born of God, born of the Spirit of God not of the flesh anymore. I may be born for my mother, I may be born for my father, but the very moment I embraced Jesus as my savior, I received a new birth in me. I became a child of God, born 
of God, born of the Spirit. And all of us here are children of God because we are born of the Spirit. So when somebody asks you, why are you a child of God? The simple answer is because I am born of God. I am born of the Spirit of God, not of the flesh anymore. So we are all born of God. Because we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and as our Savior. So life in the Spirit is a life of a rebirth. A life of being born again. As we see in the story of Nicodemus. Nicodemus and Jesus. Just read that story again at your spare time. Nicodemus comes to Jesus. He's a highly educated man. Is a scribe. Is one of the Jewish authorities, one of the elites of the time of Jesus. But he was troubled. You can see even a religious leader can be troubled, because in those days, in the in the time of Jesus, people believed religious leaders were close to God. Religious leaders knew God more than any other common person. But Nicodemus was troubled. And yet, he decided to strip himself of his own arrogance. He humbled himself and he decided to go and see Jesus. Because he heard a lot about this guy called Jesus. He saw people being healed through the works of Jesus. He saw Jesus doing miracles even though he was criticized by the jewish authorities and now nicodemus humbles himself he goes to meet jesus at night can you imagine at night for fear of being seen for fear of being criticized by his fellow jews so he goes at night so no one can see him he goes to see jesus and see how he humbles himself. He calls Jesus rabbi. Meaning he acknowledges that Jesus is the rabbi, is the teacher. He was so troubled. But see when Nicodemus got to Jesus. What was he expecting from Jesus? But see the pedagogy of Jesus. How Jesus was trying to help Nicodemus. Like bringing out of Nicodemus something which Nicodemus was ignoring. Bringing out of Nicodemus something which God put in him that Nicodemus was ignorant of. Nicodemus, you know, the, the Jewish authorities were so much used in, you know, dialectics. You know, uh, discussing even when they went to synagogues. They would read, you know, the scripture, the Old Testament. Then they would go into discussion, discussion. They're very intellectual in their approach to scripture. And Nicodemus goes to Jesus with this same approach. And he was expecting to have some kind of dialectic conversation with Jesus. Some kind of discussion with Jesus. Argument with Jesus. He came because he wanted to challenge Jesus. You cannot challenge the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God that lives in you, you cannot challenge him. Unless you challenge yourself. But never can you challenge the Spirit of God that lives in you. That is why, ironically, Nicodemus addressed Jesus as rabbi. Because he was trying to enter into some kind of argumentation with Jesus. He said, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. And we know Pharisees were very scrupulous in following all the laws of Moses. And they never agreed with Jesus. In fact, they wanted to stone him on several occasions. Because they thought the teachings of Jesus were going counter to the laws of Moses. 
And Nicodemus was one of the Pharisees. And he was not a simple Pharisee. But Jesus proved to be an excellent teacher to him. He emptied Nicodemus of his old and human knowledge to teach him the ways of God. He said, you must be born in the spirit. You must be born again. Then Nicodemus became confused. Can we imagine a scribe, a teacher of the law, be confused over just one word, be born again. Nicodemus was confused, troubled. How can I be born again? And then he, he, he was reflecting as a child. Does it mean I have to go back to my mother's womb and be born again? Very childish. Jesus said, no. You must be born of the spirit of water and of the spirit. You must be born of water and of the spirit. Water is a sign of life and sign of the spirit. And we believe by our baptism, we were born of God. Said you must be born of the spirit. And Nicodemus again got so much confused. So this was Nicodemus' struggle. What was he struggling about? Struggling about trying to understand how salvation can be possible. For him, he thought salvation could only be possible through following the laws of Moses. And then he thought maybe going to Jesus, he would spend time to understand more and more the laws of Moses. But then Jesus says, no, salvation is just about being born again, born of water and of the Spirit. Very simple, but very difficult to understand. And Jesus says, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he or she is born again. So we are born again in the sight of God. We are born of his spirit. And his spirit lives in us. And I'm so proud to say it. The spirit of God lives in me. And nothing can ever harm me. Because the spirit of God lives in me. And you must convince yourself. Say, the Spirit of God lives in me. Please say it. The Spirit of God lives in me. The Spirit of God lives in me. Amen. Amen. Nicodemus. Sometimes we can be like Nicodemus. I mean, sometimes we can manifest the attitude or we can manifest Nicodemus-like attitude. Sometimes we can be very resistant <coughs> to the voice of God and know God speaks. But most of the times we are resistant to the voice of God because we want to follow our own voice. We want to lead our lives in our own understanding. Sometimes we lack the ability to allow God to reveal himself to us. I was in The Hague and it's a church full of intellectual people. People, you know, with, you know, high careers in their lives. You know, highly educated people. People who know the Bible. Some of them are theologians, you know, and when, when it comes to the things of the spirits, I have seen a lot of them being so humbled, allowing God to lead them. Because the ways of God are not our ways. And God reveals himself to those who are willing to know him. If you are willing to know him, God will reveal himself to you. 
He will inspire you and he will lead you. But if you shut the doors of your heart to God, you will never know him. No matter how many years you spend coming to church as a Christian, you will still struggle knowing God. And most of the times, God reveals himself to you in the little, little things in your daily life. Do not seek God in the extraordinary things. Do not seek to know God through miracles, through great and wonders. You will never know God. But just look at yourself. Look at your daily life. There, you will see God. And allow him to reveal himself to you. So sometimes we can be like Nicodemus, very adamant to the truth about God, very resistant to the knowledge that God reveals to us. So Nicodemus had a choice. And here again, as I said, when God reveals himself to you, he gives you the choice. And he began to tell the people of Israel, remember, in the book of Deuteronomy, he says, I place before you life and death. He says, it is up to you. He says, if you follow life, you will live. But if you follow death, you condemn yourself. And also here again, Jesus gives a choice to Nicodemus. Either you are born again, born of God, born of the Spirit. That means you are a new person in the sight of God. Or you continue with your old life. In the sight of God, there is always a choice to make. Because we are free beings. We are free people in the sight of God. God created us with our own freedom. The capacity, the ability to say yes or no. So God does not force us into something which we do not want to, to do. So the Bible does not tell us about the aftermath of Nicodemus' encounter with Jesus. But I'm very sure Nicodemus' life was never the same. Because when you meet Jesus... Your life can never be the same. Something in you must change. Something in you must be conformed to Jesus. And Nicodemus was not the same. If you read when the Bible would see when Jesus was dead, who are the people who took his body for the burial? One of them was Nicodemus. Can you imagine? He became a follower of Jesus. And he followed him until his death. So Nicodemus' life changed. Life in the spirit. When you meet God, he changes your life. Then you begin to walk in his ways. So here is a question. Because the, 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 the most essential question that Jesus asked Nicodemus was to be born again. And most of, most of the times we struggle with that. And if you go, you know, um, with the Pentecostal, you know, church, they will tell you, you must be born again. And, you know, people who are not Pentecostals, people who are, you know, maybe coming from a Catholic background or Anglican background, sometimes they get confused. How can I be born again? What does it mean? Being born again. Being born in the spirit. The new birth Jesus speaks of is a spiritual birth to a new life or a new relationship with God. That's it. And here you need to examine yourself. What kind of relationship are you in with Jesus? Because a born again person 
is that person who is aware of his or her relationship with God. And a new birth can be possible when we are baptized into Christ, when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the first day you encounter Jesus, as I said at the beginning, you receive the Spirit of Christ. You were filled with the Holy Spirit. And now, when the Spirit is in you, you must then live a life according to the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit has given you the gift, what we call spiritual gift, through which people can see that you are a disciple of Jesus. And you need to fructify those gifts that the Spirit has given to you. Be aware of them. That's the first thing to do. Be aware what are the gifts that God has given to you. Think about that. Because through your gift, you may strengthen your relationship with God. By knowing your gift may help you to strengthen your relationship with God. And every one of us has received different gifts when we were baptized. It may be the gift of knowledge, gift of understanding, gift of discernment. It may be a gift of hospitality. Maybe one day we need to, I will offer you a session on knowing your gifts, how to discover your gift, the gift that God gave to you when you were baptized. So what you need to do here is think about your relationship with God. Think about the first day you accepted him, the first day you were baptized. It's like the first day when you meet the love of your life for the first time, how enthusiastic you are you could offer her the whole world. And most of the times, when you see your relationship with Jesus, with God, begins to come less, go back to the first experience when you accepted Jesus. You need to cling on the enthusiasm you had. I remember when I was baptized, I was, I was 15. I was so happy that I received Jesus. And I said, oh gosh, I'm gonna walk in the ways of God. And whenever I feel, you know, that relationship is coming less in my life, I try to go back to my first experience with Jesus. And it helps renew my relationship with God. Go back to that first experience you had with God. You will find strength to strengthen your relationship with God. Nicodemus goes to meet Jesus at night. When you have a problem, you, you are troubled, or you are going through some kind of crisis, go to Jesus like Nicodemus. Go to Jesus in prayer. Go to him in prayer. He will have answers to your trouble. He will have answers to your crisis. Take prayer seriously. Like Nicodemus. At night he goes to Jesus. Because he was troubled. And whenever you are troubled. Go to Jesus in prayer. And he will give you answers. That you seek. May God bless us. Let's close with the blessing. May the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring us by faith to his eternal life. Amen. May Christ, 
who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep us steadfast as we walk with him the ways, the way of his cross. Amen. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set our minds on life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen.